Hey everybody, Isaacat here, and today I want to talk to you about Hereford Base. This is the new map that was shown off at E3 2015 this year, and it was also present during our live stream event from the Road to Montreal event. So let's take a quick tour of the map as we go around and check things out as we go in depth with Rainbow Six Siege and Hereford Base. <laughs> All right, so this is Hereford Base, and this is the home of the SAS unit. It's obviously an old military facility that's fallen out of use. There's a lot of, you know, distressed textures and uh, items that are in disrepair and things like that. When I first came across this map, I thought it was really interesting. Um, I really kind of love that, like, you know, old, beat-up, gritty military feel of, of the place, and... Uh, you know, it's kind of got like this half-finished thing going on with like these plywood walls and uh, destructible features, and I thought it was really cool. Then as I played the map a little bit more, I felt a little frustrated with it. And part of the reason is there's four levels to the map, but three of the levels feel very, very similar to each other in that uh, you've got the ground level, level two, and level three. They all kind of share this theme where there's a stairwell at one end, a long hallway, branching side rooms, and very similar textures and color schemes. And when we were first starting to play the map, we were getting lost constantly. We, you know, we were like, what floor are we on? Where are we trying to get to? Where are we trying to go to? Everything looks the same. The basement feels very distinct. It has its own color scheme. It, it just has a different palette than the rest of the levels do, but uh, we found ourselves getting a little frustrated with that. Um, looking out the windows here, you can see there's this building across from us, and it, you, we actually had a sniper set up on that roof one time and kind of dump rounds on us uh, th through the openings in the windows there, which was sort of an interesting thing. We didn't realize you could get up on top of that building. Later on, you'll see that there is a ladder in that spawn point that allows you to do that. Uh, here we're taking a look at the surveillance system and all the cameras kind of show you, I mean, there's one on each level, plus you have two on the exterior, one on the main side here at one of the spawns, and then one on the back side for a different spawn position. And uh, they give you really good coverage. It's super important when you play the map to be aware of the cameras. As defenders, you really want to be keeping an eye on them to see, you know, where they're coming in, what kind of formation they have, you know, have they split up or whatnot. And uh, as the attackers, it really benefits you to go ahead and shoot those cameras out so they can't be used against you. Uh, when we played the live stream event, I think the cameras were my single biggest tool toward uh, helping kind of either get kills or have kills denied by telling people to stay away from certain areas where they're about to walk into an ambush or something like that. Cameras are super important, and they're uh, you know you can kind of see them if you look carefully as you as you go around. But um, so you know, in here we've got uh, an interesting kill that I'm able to make with a pistol, and uh, as you can see, again, this level looks a lot like the level that I just came down from. There's not a lot to uh, making it feel different than the other part of the map, and the level below it is very similar in that way too. There's some very slight differences in in texture and and color palette, but it's so subtle that it really doesn't matter a whole lot. The exterior facility is really cool. I, I'm really liking the design of everything on the outside of the building. I just really feel like at least maybe this level two here could maybe use some differences in some color palette or maybe some geometry, like maybe this level has conduit piping everywhere or I, I don't know, something, you know, it's that it just kind of pops out from the rest of the map. As you can see there, I used a fuse charge for the clusters on the wall and uh, made some nice holes in the wall and the floor, but unfortunately nobody was home in this particular room. I do check in the next room though, and oh, there I go, I found somebody, so that was at least good. Um, so, you know, as we kind of go around the map, you'll see here, you know, if we go into some of these rooms, we've got furniture in all kinds of states of disrepair. We've got these mannequins that are sort of floating around everywhere uh, for like target dummies. And more than once you come around a corner and, you know, it gives you that second of pause to wonder if that's something to shoot at or not. The map as a whole, I felt like developed a better flow the more I got used to it. Because when we first played, not only were we getting lost on the three levels having a similar scheme and feel to them, but also we, weren't, we didn't really discover all the different breaching points through floors and ceilings. We weren't taking as much advantage of the destruction initially, and as we got more used to the game, we began to do so. 
Also, there's a lot of little vents for drones to go through that we kind of discovered with time, but we didn't really see right away. And the more we played the map, the more we got used to it, and uh, it just began to feel a lot better. And now I would say I'm at a point where I, I enjoy the map and I like it a lot, but initially it just sort of confused me and overwhelmed me. There's lots of ways to get flanked in this map, just tons of them, because if you're in any of these side rooms, I mean, each room kind of has more than one way out, plus the destructible walls, the main hall, you've got the stairs at one end or the back stairs or, you know, repelling up and down. I mean, there's so many ways to get flanked in here. And when you first start playing the map, they're not necessarily all apparent. So we uh, set up on a breaching point here. This one drops down into the basement facility. Um, it's, it's a pretty strongly defendable position down there. I send a camera through here to just kind of scope things out and see what's going on, but um, drop on down and this guy just kind of runs in front of me. I don't know how he missed me and it just sort of like falling down through the hole managed to get the kill. He just ran right by me as I was using the camera and just uh, I think that's the first in-air kill that I'm aware of in Siege, but uh, so here we are setting up down in the basement. You can see this really has a different palette and color to it. It's more of a rust red sort of a color everywhere. You've got these ceramic tiles on, on a lot of the floor sections and uh, it just it just feels significantly different than the other areas and I wish that uh, we'd have a little bit more of that distinction on some of the other levels. Um, there's also some strange holdouts in some of the other portions of the map that are like in one there's a bed and another one there's like this little kids playhouse sort of a thing and I don't know if that's just because the map's been redesigned and those elements hadn't been taken out yet or like they don't seem to make sense. So I'm not sure what's going on with those exactly. Uh, down here in the basement, there's a lot of defensive positions that you can set. I think that it's a really strongly defendable point and I'd like to see them maybe make some of the other points a little bit more defendable as well just with uh, you know, some of the layout and the flow of things. Um, I think the basement tends to be like the hot spot more or less, but um, as we got more familiar with things, the other ones became more viable as well. So I guess it's, maybe it's just a matter of getting used to it. Overall, I'd say Hereford Base was a lot of fun. It started out as maybe something that we weren't such big fans of, but by the end of it, as we had gotten used to it and really gotten into the flow of how it worked and discovering all the little nooks and crannies that we didn't know about, we really began to enjoy it a lot more. This has been our first look review of Hereford Base map. To stay up to date on all the latest with Rainbow Six Siege, make sure to like and subscribe to In-Depth for more. We'll catch you next time.